So, but I always feel like everyone gets sick after the holidays because we just, our stress level is so high that we just. Right. And then and it into the next. Yeah. That should be a whole podcast topic sometime, Judy. What should be a whole podcast topic? I'm writing it down right now. Oh, how, how dumb we sometimes make the holidays, you know? And here we go with episode 75. Why do we make the holidays so stressful? Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Air Hug community, or welcome if it's your first time here. So I would love to share with you what the Air Hug community is all about. First of all, why the name Air Hug? Well, it's interesting, and I don't know if I've told this story in a while, so I'm going to retell it. At the height of COVID, I had been driving down a busy road in our area where we live, and I saw this amazing sign, and it just simply said it was a sandwich board and it was a bright yellow sign in black letters and it just said air hugs and i thought oh my gosh yes that's what we all need right now is some wonderful air hugs and I, that really haunted me and i kept thinking about it and at this time i was also preparing this podcast and didn't have a name yet but it reminded me of airwaves and it reminded me of how we really can reach out and support each other. And so this podcast is all about a great big giant air hug where we can put forward a way to grow and support and learn and be inspired. It's a place for us to pay it forward, at least for myself and my guests, where we have stories and conversations that actually are just pretty much relevant to all things. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and say it, midlife. I always feel like everyone gets sick after the holidays because we just, our stress level is so high that we just, right. And then and it it into it the it next. yeah, that should be a whole podcast topic sometime. Judy. Well, Paula, thank you for the suggestion. And here goes our discussion. All right. So I am so excited to have this discussion today and it seems like an odd time to have it. But think about it more like a recap, because we're having this discussion about holiday stress and how dumb we get at the holidays, thinking that we have to be little perfectionists. And here today, I have with us my good friend, Paula Griffin, and we're going to have this chat. So Paula, just hop on and say hello and tell us a little bit about yourself. Hey there, Judy. Um, Hey, well, I always love listening to your conversations, whether online in our virtual classes or via your podcast. And so I'm excited to be um, a part of one of these. And so, yeah, I'm a 53-year-old chick who's trying to, um, you know, work on health and wellness goals um, with you. I, I'm a former high school teacher and um, I'm a licensed professional counselor, although I'm working in sales and consulting right now. That is fascinating. First of all, we could do a whole other podcast episode on how it's rare, I think, these days for people to have one profession, how we evolve, especially as midlife women. But that yeah. could be a topic for another day. But what a great lead into that. But we were having our online workout like we normally do. And the little sound bite at the beginning of our workout is something that we talked about it's probably around December 29th or something like that. It was between sure. Christmas and New Year's. And, and just that whole thought of how we get so dumb at the holidays, stressing ourselves out. I put that really eloquently. I didn't know. uh, One thing I want to say is I didn't know that would be used as a soundbite. I had just, we had just finished our workout, like you said, but I do think that's a good adjective, uh, at least for me, self-described. I felt really dumb um, after the holidays because, you know, it's weird because even as, um, a licensed professional counselor who's aware of all the potential pitfalls and unrealistic expectations that we may put on ourselves during the holiday season and and on others, 
uh, I'm still not immune to experiencing um, weird holiday funkiness is, is what I'll call it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's interesting. Like, why do we feel, what do you think is the problem with us in trying to provide a difference between a great holiday experience and the perfect one where we are like biting our nails over it. Yeah. Well, again, I, I, I think it's, I think it's dumb. And you and I have talked about this a little bit. It's multifaceted. And I think the reason it's important to talk about it now is sometimes when we're in the moment, we're not even aware of what we're doing to ourselves. So if we, and maybe mm -hmm. to others, so if we debrief now, it better prepares us to have a mindset and, uh, you know, attitude to experience the next holiday more positively. This wasn't a great one for you. Um, you know, my, my husband and I have talked about not everybody can, uh, you know, come home for Christmas. Uh, we hear all these songs and we see all these different um, images, whether on social media or on TV, but it's unrealistic to think that um, you can be with everyone that you love in your life, especially within like a 48 hour time period. Um, but yet I think somewhere, um, I'll, I'll confess, it, confess, at least I do, you know, deep in my heart, maybe there is a little bit of that expectation to recreate some kind of tradition we had or a longing for some kind of holiday experience that looks like what we're seeing um, in media. Yeah, I, in fact, that was gonna be my next question. I really do wonder like what effect both the advertising world and the social media world. And of course that kind of is blending a lot these days oh, sure. as on us. And it's almost a guilt, like what you're not making a perfect holiday for your family. <laughs> What's wrong with you? You know? And I feel like it may, it's very subliminal. Don't you think? I do. Um, I, I do because I'm not a dumb person, even though I probably uh, was dumb during the holiday season, because, you know, <laughs> especially Especially as our, our lives change, which, you know, if, if we have the privilege of that happening, uh, because we're still here, you know, we have adult kids and I found myself, you know, using words that would probably uh, evoke a type of, I don't know, nostalgia or, or loneliness. And I recognize that I probably need to reframe that it's a great thing that our lives change and our children's lives grow and expand and they have more people and more love and more enrichment um, in their lives, you know? So um, it's not necessarily a negative thing, but, you know, I, I recalled when I was young and married and, and maybe you and a lot of the people who listen to your podcast can relate, you know, sometimes it would be really, difficult navigating the traditions that, that I had, you know, from my parents and grandparents and that my husband had from his parents and grandparents. And so, you know, you're trying to figure out which ones you'll keep and who you'll go see when during holidays, but not disappoint anyone. But you ended up feeling just a little bit frantic and run down, you know, sometimes yourself. And so I think it's ironic that now that I'm at the age that I'm at and I have adult children and I'm trying to mesh uh, a new marriage with his children, it just adds more to the equation. And, you know, we're all still doing the, the same dumb thing. You know, one set of kids was trying to fly in from Seattle and go see all the parents and grandparents. Maybe another set of kids was driving in from here. You know, maybe my... Uh, daughter or son is going with friends or a girlfriend or, or boyfriend, you know, that's significant. And, you know, it's just a mess. <laughs> you know what? And I'm laughing because how many of you listening right now are going through the checklist in your head of like all the people in that you were trying to get together and please during the holidays? I mean, you just made a great list of it and the traditions that you are trying to preserve Sure. You know, and it is, it's definitely a balancing act, but one of the things that you and I talked about are 
number one is there is no actual Norman Rockwell holiday like you see in a Christmas card or like you see at Hallmark, right? That is a product of marketing. And I think what we have to understand is we're so fortunate to have grown this. I feel like uh, as midlife women, a lot of us have our circle of family and love has grown. And like you said, we can't really see everyone in a 48 hour period. So yes, it's uh, a great- all of that, all of that can't be condensed in, in, into that time period. Um, but, you know, I want to talk to, I'll loop back around to your comment, but, you know, this whole idea of, uh, I'm in Texas, uh, so I'm, I'm not, I think this is like a national expression, but, you know, I'm using air quotes, having Christmas, you know, what does having Christmas mean? Um, somehow having Christmas has come to mean, well, going to parents or grandparents or wherever, and you're having this big traditional meal and opening a, bun a bunch of presents. And I've seen, you know, we were talking about social media, Facebook friends say, well, here's round three of having Christmas. <laughs> You know, because you're yes. going to so many different places and having these celebrations. And while I certainly don't mean to diminish these special traditions that many families have, I guess my perception is that for me, it can distort things or lose meaning. And so I think bottom line is what I'm craving. And I think, I think other people our age um, do too is I'm, I'm craving some alternatives, you know, could the holiday season or having Christmas mean some, having Christmas air quotes again, means something, else, <laughs> you know, um, mm -hmm. could it be uh, taking my kids to a beautiful musical experience? Um, could it be taking them on a hike and having a picnic somewhere? Uh, could it be doing something for others together that's significant or, or oh, meaningful? I love that. Um, you know, because you talk about social media, and I, I think all of us can have, I know I have, have FOMO, you know, uh, fear, fear of missing out. It's almost, it, it becomes extremely uh, comparative. You know, because when I see what other people are doing and even what my own kids are doing, it's like, uh, you know, oh, all of Judy's kids came in for Christmas. They, they all came, came in. And while it's so cool to see family pictures and see how everyone's come together and changed and grown up or what they're doing now, you know, there's this other deeper part that maybe we don't talk about that's like, well, what am I doing wrong that my kids didn't want to come see me today. You know, I have failed at creating family traditions or a family environment that merits them coming to see me on a holiday. Uh, you know, you which, know, I got to interject there because that is such <laughs> a great opportunity to think about the stories we tell in our head. Yes. Right. And I've talked a lot about um, Byron Katie and how she talks about the stories we tell ourselves. Are they real? Judy, I pulled out that book because it occurred to me reflecting on this from our conversation the other day, that our book club discussion on this book, Loving yeah. What Is, is so helpful and relevant to these kinds of false narratives because they're BS, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're fabricated in our head because right. exactly we see what other people are doing. And remember, we all know this, and Brenda said it in class the other day, you know, social media is a highlight reel. It's not what really happened. We didn't see that you have a sink full of dishes and your laundry is like this piled high, again, talking with my hands, you know, and maybe they see that, you know, and I put up my highlight reel too, you know, I will say. Sure. And it's kind of funny because it even looked like all my kids were there, but a couple of them were on Zoom. So they actually weren't all there. <laughs> and I was just using your name as an example. Yeah. You know? uh, but but, but yeah. the stories we tell, and the more we tell them in our brain, the more we believe them. And our brain is so literal. Like you said, like, what's wrong with me that, that I didn't get this or that or, you know, and 
And I agree, having Christmas, why does it have to be on Christmas? Maybe right. when we've got, you know, kids who've got in-laws and other families and whatever, maybe Christmas could be on a different day. Sure, sure. You know, and, and people could I, just at some I, point in time. I've told myself those things. And of course, we've planned for those things. And, and you're like, oh, great. I need to rest and, and relax and have some time um, to myself. But yes, there. For me, some of the weird feelings still crept in. And so I think that's just a clue that probably you need to take a look of them, look at them. And I think during our everyday lives, maybe we're so busy with work and routine that we don't take a look at some of those things. But I, I guess, Judy, my observation is that the holiday season can really magnify some of those feelings that we don't take a look at, um, you know, during the routine ordinary days, um, or it magnifies, just magnifies what we're feeling, you know, if, if there's been loss, it magnifies that loss. Um, you know, if, if, if there's been some fear, it can magnify that, you know, likewise, if you're in a very joyful season in life, uh, it can certainly magnify that. Um, but I think, I think cumulatively, we end up with one of the statements that I learned in my counseling program is, is, is always a no, no, you know, it's not the way it's supposed to be. This isn't how, you know, fill in the blank family is supposed to be. This isn't how Christmas is supposed to be. This isn't the way my life is supposed to be. And whenever you hear a statement like that, you know, it's, it, it, you know, it's just a signal that it's flawed thinking, but yeah, uh, it's it a happens. mismanaged expectations, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. But, but it happens. <laughs> yeah, well, we're human, right? Yes. Right. Yes. Just because we know that, that we shouldn't, and here we go with shouldn't, just because we know yes. something doesn't mean we actually can embrace it. Right. You know, it's going to take a lot of work, you know? Right. And those are other um, key words that, uh, signal flawed thinking to Judy, you know, the must, the shoulds, you know, yes, the should have especially those, right those kinds of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. But yeah, I mean, for me, and maybe other people who are in similar situations, or really some of the feelings are just the same, although the circumstances may be different, because uh, we're at different points in our personal relationships, but yet at the point in life where we have some similar scenarios. Um, yeah, I, I, I guess reflecting on it now, there was just a sense of, of failure. I have failed at having the kind of, of home and environment um, that I, that I should have had. You know, uh, they'd rather be somewhere else, or they're having a better time somewhere else, or they had a better time with uh, their dad's family <laughs> than they do with mine. You know, but you know. It's that's so now, but it was very real at the yeah. time. Yeah. But how I wonder how they felt. Like if they felt torn, like, oh my gosh, I have to make a decision. You know, how am I going to fit in seeing mom and dad and my husband's, you know, mom and dad, you know. Well, and you so, talked about you talked about pleasing. I haven't had that conversation with them. You know, I just tried to, oh great, sure, that's fine. You know, I mean, whatever works for you, we'll work around it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I haven't had that tough conversation either. <laughs> yeah. yeah, which you could always, you know, how I, I should say, how could you approach that with them for next year? Yeah, that's a good question and probably one that uh, on which I need to work. Yeah, um, it doesn't need to be answered, but I even everyone listening is how could you approach this next year to maybe get your expectations in alignment with how it really is? Sure. And I think part of it is just acknowledging that there are unrealistic expectations and, and I don't want them to feel that burden. Um, you know, going back to the book that we were just referencing, loving mm -hmm. what is, um, you know, the author has, I think four or five different questions that you can use to, challenge, um, you know, unrealistic or flawed 
beliefs like you and I are mentioning. So I think mm -hmm. it would be good to apply some of those principles to some of these things because, you know, one of the statements um, in the book, and I'm paraphrasing, you know, is that people are always trying to change the world so that they can be happy. Uh, and that's backwards thinking. You know, we have to change change ourselves and then our experience changes. Um, so I Oh, think wait, wait. Can you say that again? <laughs> that is like, I love that. I'll, Let well, me, I want to hear it again. It's, uh, it's, it's Byron Katie. It's not mine, but I'm paraphrasing. But, you know, that people are always trying to change the world so that they can be happy. But that approaches that approaches everything backwards. We have to change how we think and our experience uh, will change. So it's not just, you know, if my kids would come home or if, if this would be different or if I could have the right presence or if, you know, we have the right meal, you know, whatever it is, then I will be happy. Yeah. Um, that's backwards. Um, our mindset and attitude will determine how happy our experience is. I don't know. Does that make sense? <laughs> it makes so much sense. Well, think about it. If you decide that you're going to be happy with whatever, it's unconditional happiness. So, right? right? Right. It's basically a thought in our head. They're like, we're going to decide to be happy. I once heard a story and I'm probably going to butcher this, <laughs> but it was in a woman who was older and blind was being brought into her assisted living facility Wow. And they brought her into her room and she, she offered this up. She just said, I love it here. And they're like, but you can't even see it. And she's like, oh no, I love it here. And they're like, what do you mean? She's like, I already made up my mind that I love it here. And so, wow. yeah, I mean, wow. I mean, if she could do that, what well, faith, right? <laughs> uh, well, uh, absolutely. And, you know, you're bringing up the assisted living I have a similar, well, it reminds me of a similar story. On Christmas day, my husband and I went to have lunch with his mom, who is in um, a wonderful assisted living facility. Um, you know, I was really kind of you know, in a funk that, that day um, because things hadn't worked out, you know, looking back like I thought they should have, like they were supposed to have uh, those terrible words. Um, but when we went to see her, um, and uh, again, I'm so dumb because when I used to work with clients or even students at the high school and they were going through something difficult that was consuming their mental and emotional bandwidth, um, we always talked about what could you do for others <clears throat> to remove some of the focus on yourself. Not that we don't need to look inward, but it has to be balanced, you know, self-awareness uh, you know, with getting outside yourself too. So I, I guess my point is my husband and I had gone there and I looked around at the staff, um, serving the different residents and, and trying to engage everyone. And it occurred to me, you know, why can't <clears throat> air quotes having Christmas look more like this? Could I not have volunteered to help serve the residents that day? Because I'm sure they were short staffed because it's tough getting people to commit to work on the holiday. Um, could we or I have done something for the residents to enrich their experience that day, you know, thereby enriching my own experience? Yeah. Um, and maybe that's what, that's what could happen with the holidays or my having Christmas could look like. What can we do to um, help others uh, to use the gifts that we have to extend to others. Yeah. I, I do. I'm going to play devil's advocate. Think that okay. could be a double-edged sword because could it not? And I also want to speak to the word dumb. So remind me, could it not <laughs> evoke <laughs> guilt if we don't do that? Well, good, good question. And you know, I don't, I don't have the answers to these things, but I appreciate the opportunity to talk about them because yeah. I think that's maybe what I don't know hit me in the face this year is yeah. not talking about it not considering it not having a conversation with those people who are important uh, to me um, yeah. and you know 
just kind of going through the motions, expecting, you know, one thing and then just trying to navigate a weird space. You know, yeah. one thing I highlighted in the book, Judy, uh, at the very beginning that I think really speaks to what we're discussing um, is she wrote, you're either believing your thoughts or questioning them. There's no other choice. I love that. Well, yeah. in reference to the guilt statement, that really could just be a thought that you either believe or question. Yes. Right? Yes. So, and I, I just I, want to so say I, one. I, I'd rather be a questioner. Is that a, is that a word? <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know. It is for us. We have yeah. our own words. I, I would rather, I would rather question instead of just believing this is how it's supposed to be, because that's not going to lead to a very enriching or fulfilling experience in life or with others. No. Yeah. yeah. Question our negative thoughts. And because why not, you know, yes. Because sometimes they're real and sometimes they aren't, right? And so we need to, folks, if you're interested, the book is called Loving What Is by Byron Katie. And I've probably referenced it on this podcast before, but it's a, I definitely consider it. I've probably read it three times. So worth it. But I want to say one thing about dumb. So you may have had a thought that was dumb or made a decision that you regretted or had a dumb action, but it doesn't mean that you were dumb. Yeah, and absolutely, <laughs> absolutely valid, yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, listen, thank you so much for this discussion today. I really just felt like it happened and we had to just hash it out. Right, so, well, my hope is too that um, others who listen to your podcast, that Maybe something that we've said will resonate with them and they can join in this conversation as well, because you always get so much insightful, uh, you know, feedback from people who listen to you and who uh, follow you on your different platforms. And I think it helps all of us. Yeah, I think it does help. You know, I, there is there's definitely good to social media. And by the way, um, where can people follow you? Hey, I'm on Instagram at second underscore wind underscore friend, because I feel like, uh, hey, at this point in life, we've gotten knocked down by different things. And so uh, let's come together and support each other for ways to get back on our feet and and keep on going. Oh, I love it. And I do love your account. So I will put that in the show notes along with the book. And thank you so much for hey, taking the time. Judy. All right. Let's do better next year. <laughs> Let's do better next year. Maybe we'll have a recap again next year. I like that. It'll yeah. be the part B to this. <laughs> All right. Good. Thanks. Okay. You know, inspiration for interesting conversations pop up in the darndest places. And literally, we had just finished... Um, our workout session and we we're all talking about getting sick and being exhausted and so I just thought you know what if this is on our minds it's probably on your mind too so I hope this was helpful for you thank you so much for tuning in and tune in every single Tuesday for a new episode here on the Air Hug Community Podcast where we do focus on living midlife as best we can our idea is to live well as long as possible and die fast. If you haven't already, please do us a favor and write a review and subscribe over on Apple Podcasts. And just thank you very much. You know, I'm not going to say you're going to win a big prize or anything if you do it, but if you do do it, you will have paid it forward so that other people can get their ears on this podcast. Ta-ta for now. Mm -hmm.